I'm going to talk about uh, a more speculative thing than uh, my two previous uh, speakers. And it's about doing quantum information on indefinite causal structures. And this is the work that has been done together with Ognino Reshkov and uh, Fabio Costa. So when we think about the causal order in all broadly accepted physical theories, we assume that the causal order is well defined. And it's given by the space-time structure. So you have two events like A uh, is before B, um, or A and C, which are causally neutral because you can't send a signal from A to C or to C to A. So these are the two possible correlations we observe in uh, uh, physics. Uh, but now, the Penn's theorem tells us that we should be careful to assume uh, properties existing prior to and independent of measurements. So what about causal order? Can we think about the causal order in a similar way? Is there something like a quantum causal relation? So imagine the two events, A and B, and uh, the causal relation between them actually depends on the a metric we assume. And here I illustrate this with a massive object close to B, such that time ticks uh, slower at B as compared to A. Or alternatively, we can think about placing this massive object closer to A. But imagine now that these two actually uh, physical realizations came from a quantum mechanical experiment in which we have a, a beam splitter for, for Earth placing Earth in closer to B or A in two possible alternatives <laughs> in a superposition. So we don't have a really working physical theory to deal with these things. So in that case, causal relation is simply not well defined. So here's the outline of my talk. I will introduce a framework which can deal with these situations. Uh, it's a framework for quantum mechanics. We know assume global uh, causal structure. It's a framework which includes also all possible situations that we are familiar with, causally ordered situation. And this kind of program, research program, is, has been started in the past. And uh, to my knowledge, first type person to ask this question was Lucien Hardy, thinking about causal relations not only dynamical, like in general relativity, but also indefinite, like in quantum mechanics. But also other people, like uh, I think Dariano is somewhere in the audience, and uh, his Pavia group working on a similar thing, and uh, recently also work by Matt Leifer and uh, Rob Speckens about causally neutral formulation of quantum mechanics. And I will also introduce some correlations that actually defy causal order by uh, showing that they actually violate uh, causal inequality in a similar fashion like what we have in Bell's inequalities. So, once again, causal order is in a traditional formulation, quantum mechanics, well defined. And we have two situations, either where we have no signaling correlations for the observers that are space-like separated, or we do have a signaling correlations. But these signaling correlations are always one directional signaling from the past to the future, like in a time-like time -like separated experiment. What I mean with causally order is uh, in very operational sense. I talk about operational meaning of signaling. Uh, at the end of the day, the two experimentalists will have some results, A and B are outcomes, and X and Y are side, uh, some independently chosen settings by two observers. And I will call that there is no signaling or they are causally neutral if when I take the marginals, summing up the local results, for example, on L, Alice, then the marginal probability distribution on Bob depends only on his local measurement setting and not really on, uh, on Alice's choice. So it's always dependence only on the local settings. One directional signaling is the case where I do have signaling, but only one direction. And in this case, I have signaling from Bob to Alice because when I sum up Bob local results to get the marginal probability on Alice's side, it does depend both on the choice of any setting and on Bob setting. Now, can we go beyond that? Can we have a situations where we may have, for example, two directional signaling? And this is indeed true. If uh, you choose as a solution of uh, Einstein's equations, Gödel universe, in which you have closed lifetime curves, then you can have 
that the output of Bob Laboratory inputs the Alice and the other way around in some kind of a causal loop. But we, as we all know, these causal loops are not without really paradoxes and the easy way to see is imagine that Alice performs a not operation and Bob identity. So you can start with a zero as an input of Alice Labs, turn it into the one, go to Bob's lab, one enters his lab and one exits his lab, and of course one is not equal to zero, which is just another way to look at the grandfather paradox. Now, there are attempts <coughs> and proposed quantum solutions to these problems, like in Deutsch version of Bennett, Schumacher, Svetlitschny, Lloyd, CTC, like structures, but I want to warn you that these are nonlinear extensions of quantum theory. So in a sense, they are not really quantum mechanics uh, or they do not preserve the linear structure of quantum mechanics. And the question is whether we can do that and still be free of paradoxes. And that's what the framework is about. So what I think about here is uh, having an Alice in a closed laboratory. And there are two instances of time when this uh, lab uh, opens. That's when the system enters the lab. Then certain transformation is performed in the system and the system exits the lab. And that's the only way how really each part in the system inside interacts with the outside world. Now I will be interested in correlations. So all what I said for Alice applies for Bob as well. But I will not make any assumptions of the pre-existing causal structure. So I will not know whether Alice operations are before Bob or Bob's are before Alice or anything like that. Now the main premise of this formalism is that local descriptions in the labs agree with quantum mechanics. What I mean is that, that within a lab, we have the laws as we know them. And well, in technical terms, that's the transformation what Alice can perform are complete positive trace non-increasing maps from the um, linear operators on the input Hilbert space H1 to the linear operators of the output Hilbert space H2. The two Hilbert spaces do not need to have the same dimension because they can use ancillas or discard some systems and so on. And you see there is some uh, outcome observed which actually is an index of the CP uh, map. Now, unfortunately, it's not my <laughs> computer, so what here is written is that when you add up all these individuals' uh, maps, you have to get something which is a complete positive trace preserving map. So CPTP map, if I add up all possible results. Now I will not talk and I will not use these map uh, maps uh, as a functions, but rather a particular representation of the maps, which is called technically choi mokpolsky isomorphism. So every of this map that observer can apply is actually a positive matrix from this tensor product of the input and output Hilbert space. So if I have two more parties, and that's the notion and uh, uh, notation that I will use, uh, you have uh, some uh, map represented by this matrix that collect, connects the input uh, Hilbert space A1 and A2 and uh, B1 and B2 by Bob and his uh, uh, map. Now, I said that I would like to have the linear structure for quantum theory. So that's why I uh, required that probabilities are bilinear functions of these local maps that can perform Alice and Bob. And then at the end of then, these bilinear functions is always represented through some scalar product, some trace rule. And in that trace rule, I have these local CP maps. That's what Alice and Bob can choose. And I have something, and that's the main ingredient of this formalism, is something which we call process metric. Something which describes everything around the two laboratories. And now the goal is to characterize the more general process metrics. Now, here is our conditions that we impose on, this con on these process metrics to get some meaningful physics out of them. And that's uh, all really uh, weak conditions. Namely, we require that the probabilities are positive, uh, non-negative numbers, um, which with the assumptions that the observers can share some entangled states, uh, leads to the fact that these are positive matrices, these process matrices. And secondly, we require that when I sum up all of, over all results, I should get one when I sum up these probabilities. And this has, gives you another restriction, namely the probability for these CPTP maps, namely when I sum up over all possible results, gives one. 
And out of these two innocent requirements, we get that not every possible uh, metrics is uh, process metrics. And actually, there is a huge restriction. Now, one way to see this is to take these metrics that lives now in these four Hilbert spaces, input and output spaces of Alice and Bob, and decompose in some Hilbert Schmidt basis. And then look at these terms, for example, and call them type one if they have non trivial input only in the Hilbert space A1. And I call uh, type A1 and 2 if they only have a non-trivial in these two <laughs> Hilbert spaces um, contributions and the rest is identity. Now it turns out, and this is a very important crucial slide, is that only what are possible representation of these process matrices are states where I have input Hilbert spaces, so I have something which enters the two laboratories, or I have something which is a channel where output of Alice is connected with the input of Bob, or I have something which is a channel with memory, where I have an entangled state and one part enters Alice lab, uh, lab and then the output is merged with another part in, to the input of Bob. Now, if I, this is all what we have in quantum mechanics. So is it anything new what we get from this formalism? And it will be very sadly if this is all what we can say. Now, one thing that we can pose, we can pose the question if I collect all these process matrices to have the causal relation such that, for example, the first uh, represent all process masses what Bob cannot signal to Alice. So Alice signals to Bob or they are causally neutral. And all those where Alice cannot signal to Bob. And I think about all classical convex probabilistic mixture, mixtures of order processes. I might ask, is this all what I can have? Are all W matrices of that form? And the answer is no. And here is the example of that. And the example is best explained in the terms of a causal game. And the causal game is a game where you should guess partner's input. So you have two partners. Alice is given a bit A, and Bob is given a bit B. And Alice should produce X and Bob Y, which are their best guesses for the value of the bit given to the other. So you really have to guess the in, uh, partner's input. And there is an additional bit, B prime, which is given to Bob, that tells him whether he should guess her bit, for example, for B prime equal to 1, or she should guess his bit for B prime equal to 0. And they have to maximize the cost function, which is the probability for the correct guess. So this is one half, because B prime is given one half one possibility and the other. And when B prime is zero, she should guess his input. And when B prime is one, he should guess her input. Now, it's very easy to find out what is the bound for every causally ordered game, for every game that we can win with the current understanding of quantum mechanics. Well, then you have uh, some global time that is, that is shared by Alice and Bob. And at some point, Alice gets some particle in her laboratory. On the basis of this measurement, she can make a guess. But she's in the past of Bob, so she can only randomly <coughs> guess his input. And then she gets some input. And this input she can really send to Bob, who can read out the information encoded in the particle and make a perfect guess. And then he receives an input, but it is in the future and it doesn't matter for the game. So at the end of the day, uh, day he can guess perfectly uh, her bit whenever he's asked to do so. But in other cases, when she's asked to guess his bit, it can only be done randomly. So altogether, the bound is three quarter. Now it turns out that there are processes within this framework that I introduce that actually lead to the probability of success which is higher than three quarter. So I'm, one can prove this mathematically, but I will give you a, a sketch of how to really understand this result. So this is one W matrix, one process matrix that um, is represented in a Pauli matrices. And it's not of the type of a classical mixture because uh, between causally ordered W matrices. And one way to understand this is uh, to see the following. 
Bob is given this additional bit, with, and he might be in power to either um, 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 do his best to guess her bit, or the other way around, to make a strategy and available to, for Alice to guess his bit. Now, if B prime is one, he can measure, perform a certain measurement on his input qubit, and this measurement, if it is measurement along z direction, would actually, because this, of this x direction um, at the same Hilbert space, will destroy this part of the W matrix. And in that way, he effectively opens a channel from Alice to Bob. And in that way, he enables Alice to send him his bit, uh, the bit of her. However, if uh, he's asked to send Alice a bit in B prime is equal zero case, he will measure uh, the input bit in a sigma x basis and actually destroy the first part of this expression. And in that way, he opens actually the channel, channel with memory from hit to her. So effectively what is here the case is, depending on his choice, Bob can power, has the power to end up either after or before Alice with certain probability. And the probability is uh, square root of two divided by two. Um, so these are kind of a, if you want, uh, superposition of causal orders in these situations. And it's in the power of the choice of the measurement of Bob to choose one or the other causal order. <coughs> so this gives the probability of sex, which is higher than three quarter. And in that way, operationally, in a sense of the game, demonstrates that you have a resource which is not merely a resource of the classical mixtures of causally ordered processes. Now, there is a slide for the people who have heard this talk before, mostly of quantum information, um, people that this two square root of root two actually is the zeros of bound for quantum correlations with indefinite causal order. You can prove that you cannot go beyond that. You can also prove that one has causally non-separable process matrices, matrices that cannot be written as a classical mixture of causally ordered processes, but they do not violate causal inequality. And it is very analog to the situation between the non-locality entanglement in quantum information where you have a states that are provable non-entangled but do not violate uh, Bell's inequalities. And uh, recently there was a progress by people um, uh, around in the group of Stefan Wald, Emin Baumer and Stefan Wald. They proved that there is a kind of a GH set type of correlations for three observers within this framework. So that's the summary of my talk. Um, what I've showed is a unified framework for both signaling and no signaling quantum correlations. So even if it turns out that these um, correlations with indefinite causal order are not realizable in nature, or we can't find them, I think the framework itself is very useful because it's a unified way to treat uh, both uh, time-like and space-like correlations, which are usually in the standard formulation differently treated. Uh, and uh, I showed the situations where causal orbit between laboratory operations is not definite, which might indicate the global causal order need not to be the uh, crucial part of, uh, of quantum theory. There are many open questions. Most burning one is can we realize non-causal non processes in the lab? Does this imply that generalization of the concept of space-time, because if you have a space-time, you have a definite causal order? Are there principles that can select actually what kind of correlations are possible in this framework? Why there is this Silas and bound? Why can't we go beyond that? And can be that used as a new re uh, resource for quantum information processing? Uh, we see that there is at least one game you can win with that uh, as compared with the uh, uh, definite causal order correlations. So thank you very much for your attention.